All right, guys, welcome back to more Ignorance in Basketball. Now, if I'm sounding weird, it's because my tongue fucking hurts. I don't know what happened. It feels like a fucking little sand crab snuck up and pinched the shit out of the tip of my tongue. That didn't happen because I haven't been to the beach. I don't know what happened, but for whatever reason, shit hurts, and it feels weird to talk, and it hurts like a bitch to eat. But we're just going to power through this. Because not only am I a fucking cult leader, not a bitch, but I have passion for this team and this channel. So let's get into how the Suns play today. Now, they played the Rockets, who are straight garbage, on paper. I think after the trade, they got a little bit better. Uh, Kelly Olenek has been balling out of his fucking mind, apparently. He's like one of the best... He's one of the most efficient uh, scorers from the field this season. Guess who also is? Our boy Mikhail Bridges, by the way. Uh, it's like a, it's hilarious. I looked at the the little chart that they show, that they threw up there, and it was like all centers, and then just Mikhail Bridges, <laughs> like just by himself. Uh, so that's cool. So okay, let's see how they shot as a team. So yeah, defense was not really a thing today. Which I'm not mad at, because again, we all know this team loves to take breaks, and I can respect that. Honestly, at this point, I'm not going to bitch like, why didn't they beat this team by 50? This team fucking sucks. I get it. While I was watching the game, I was thinking about it, right? And my theory is, this team doesn't really show you who it is until the fourth quarter. Unless Sarge is having a good game, because I was thinking about it. This team loves to go to its bench, right? Sometimes I'll have Chris Paul all bench, Booker all bench. Um, but for the most part, they love to throw the, the full bench in. And I realized that when Booker is not on the court and it's either full bench or Chris Paul in full bench, Saric is the key. He is the fucking key. If he's not scoring, the bench is just fucked. Because Chris Paul's not like dominant enough offensively to just take over the offense. Neither is really Cameron Payne. Cameron Johnson still refuses to drive in, so he can't create his own shot. I think we all know Tory Craig can't create his own fucking shot. So Booker will take over offensively. He doesn't give a fuck. For whatever reason, Chris Paul, even though he can get his own shot whenever he wants, a lot of the time he doesn't. So he goes to Sarch a lot. And if Sarch isn't scoring... It just doesn't work, especially if his shot, if he's not hitting that shot at all, it's tricky because Sarge has the athleticism of an 80-year-old woman with two knee surgeries, okay? So you're going to get hurt on the boards. And if he goes, you know, two, three, maybe four possessions without scoring or, you know, you throw a turnover in there, that can turn a 10-point lead into either down by two or tied real quick. It doesn't matter who the fuck you're playing in the NBA. So that's what I was realizing. And again, and we've been talking about this in the comments. That's why I want to see some fucking Kaminsky minutes. Can we switch it up, por favor? Please. Or at least get some more minutes in there. Something like have somebody else who will create their own shot if Chris Paul refuses to. I Hopefully he'll be more aggressive in the playoffs. He tends to be. But... Also, I think the, the lineups are going to be different. Like, I think we're going to have a lot more Bridges minutes. When he comes into the bench, that helps things out a lot just because he's the kind of dude who can just clean up mistakes. You know, he can get quick steals. He helps on switches a lot. I think I've noticed that Bridges does that helps his team out a lot because they switch so much. So usually Bridges is guarding the point guard, right? So if there's a pick and roll with a point guard and it's Bridges and Aiden are defending it, and they have to switch. What I noticed that Bridges will do a lot is he'll steal the ball right before the point card um, kicks it to the big man. So, so before Bridges actually has to guard whatever big there is, he'll just steal the ball really fast before. So he'll do a lot of shit like that. That'll really help with defense. You know, obviously his cutting is really good. He's a pretty consistent three point shooter. So I think we're gonna see more of that in the playoffs is just my guess i think bridges is going to get a lot more minutes and you know probably crowder too and you know people who are vets people that have proven themselves throughout the season that just make winning plays 
And um, hopefully we get some more more minutes in there too. I know he's having a kind of a shitty year shooting. I saw somewhere that he was shooting like 20 something percent from three. But I think it's just because he's been in and out of the rotation so much. It's not like this dude's just fucking jacking up shots as soon as he comes in the game, you know? And again, there's not that many players that can consistently create their own shot on this team. And he is one of them. So I kind of feel like I really want to see him be able to get into a rhythm before the playoffs start. Even though, I don't know, by the way things are looking, I don't think we're going to see a lot of that. But, you know, whatever. Also, I got to talk about our boy, Aiden. Actually, you know, before I do that, or while I do that, why not? Let's just go through um, every player individually. So Aiden, thing I noticed about him, and um, honestly, I want to ask you guys, do you think Aiden is playoff ready, right? Because obviously here in Death Valley, we believe it's ring season. I don't want to speak for everybody, but I think most of us believe it's ring season. I think we can all agree that this team, at the very least, has a real shot at winning. So I know a lot of the, you know, the quote-unquote, NBA specialists, analysts, whatever you want to fucking call them. They think that Aiton is like the biggest question mark. I've seen a lot of growth from him recently over these past, I don't know, 10 or so games. I know that's a really small sample cycle, especially when you're talking about winning a fucking championship. But hey, you know, I'm going off of what I'm going off of. He just seems to be a lot more confident. Like today with his post scoring, it was fucking automatic. If he got the ball deep in the post, that's two points every time. And he can, he'll do that against the Christian Woods and, you know, any center that's either skinnier than him or smaller than him. But when I look at the way he's scoring, he could do that on damn near anybody else. Like, especially those little turnaround fadeaway jumpers he takes. I don't love those, but if he's hitting them, two points is two points, you know. And I think the deep hooks, like, who's blocking that? If he, let's just say, I think he could take those, or... Get those shots off on an Anthony Davis. Or definitely on a Jokic. I mean, it's not like he's a great defender. But against the good centers that we're going to see in the playoffs. You know, against a DeAndre Jordan if the Nets make it to the finals. Because obviously this team is. I don't know about the Nets. I think there's like they got a lot of injury shit going on. We'll see. It's definitely interesting. But what I'm trying to say is uh, <laughs> I think that the more confidence we see from him, I think the better we can expect in the playoffs. And seeing him, you know, with that jump hook against Capella and the way he's being being able to close out games in the fourth, especially with his defense. Like, I think that and one today against, uh, what's his face? Against Christian Wood was kind of bullshit. Um, but lately, his fourth quarter defense has been really fucking solid against bigs, against guards. It's rebounding. His, uh, his shot blocking, his staying out of foul trouble. He's been really good with that type of stuff. And when people say a team is young, there's there's definitely things that come to mind, right? Because people always want to say that this Suns team is young. These are the type of mistakes that I see young teams making or young players making. One, getting into foul troubles is a big one, especially for guards. Poor shot selection, turnovers, not being able to close out games well. You know, shit like that. Uh, just like not being in the right place at the right time. Shitty defense, like inconsistency. Like that's the type of stuff I see from young players, right? But honestly, I don't really see that from anybody else. It, like that I think is going to be crucial. Like I would say Cam Johnson is somebody who I would say is a young player. Honestly, I know Mikhail is, but... He was in college for four years, and the way he plays, I just don't think of him as a young player, even though it's only like his second and a half, third year. And Aiton, like I said in a, in a previous video, he doesn't have to be the third guy on this team as far as scoring. As long as all we need Aiton to do, I think at least, stay out of foul trouble, play good defense on whoever the center is, especially if they can score, or like the power forward, you know, he'll pretty much just, Monty will pretty much just put Aiden on their best score 
if it's a center or a power forward. Like, if the Suns end up playing the Lakers in the playoffs, best believe Aiton's going to be guarding AD, not fucking uh, Crowder or even Sarge, I don't think. I think he's going to put Aiton on. So as long as he can play decent defense on that, stay out of foul trouble, rebound the best that he can, protect the rim, you know, call out screens, all that type of shit, and give you about 10 points a game, that's really all you need from him. And you wouldn't even need that much if the fucking Suns will pick up a damn rim protector or a second rim protector before the trade or before the buyout market's over. Now, I hope they do that. I haven't seen any signs that they will, seeing as though they don't have any roster spots and I haven't heard shit. But I mean, I didn't hear anything about Tory Craig before they picked him up, so we'll see. And uh, yeah, so that's why I don't really buy into the, oh, this team is so young, because like Booker's ready. I think we can all agree on that. Bridges is ready. Cam Johnson, I don't know how vital of a piece he's going to be. I could see, you know, between Bridges, Craig, and uh, Crowder really taking up a lot of those minutes. And Sarge, too. So I don't know how vital he's going to be. You know, I th- I think deeper, the deeper the playoff run, you know, the tighter the, the lineups get. So we'll see. And Nader, too. I mean, I didn't even bring up Nader, so... Um, yeah, I'm really, I'm feeling good about this team. A lot of teams are injured and the Suns are not, which is a beautiful thing. I think they got rid of all that bullshit early. And if they can just stay healthy, keep the synergy good, uh, as they go into the playoffs, I'm really feeling good about this team. I really am. But I have been rambling on and on and I haven't even gotten to the fucking second player on this fucking list. So let's keep going. We got Devin Booker, 36 points, 6 assists, 6 boards in 36 minutes. That's beautiful. That's Mui Ban. And that is still Spanish, guys. Uh, Chris Paul gave you a very nice 19 points, 11 assists, 6 boards. Bridges, 20 points. I'm telling you, anytime he scores over fucking 16, it's a win. 20 points, 3 assists, 1 board in 33 minutes. Crowder with 11, 3, and 3. Cameron Johnson gave you 12. Torrey Craig, only 2 points. Sarich, another rough night. One point, two assists, two boards. Not a field goal, obviously. Yeah, he was not great today. Cameron Payne, only two points, three assists in 13 minutes. I'm telling you, man. If Cameron Payne and Dario Sarich are constantly aggressive, or not even Sarich. Sarich isn't really passive that often. I think sometimes he's just off and sometimes he's, he's on. But if Cameron Payne is aggressive... That could be the key to the bench, but he just never is. So I can't say that he's he's the key because he's never really aggressive like that. I think he could always be a little bit more aggressive, even his most aggressive games. Um, That's pretty much it. Everybody else was DNP. Well, uh, Carter got 10 minutes too, three points, uh, two boards in 12 minutes. It's weird that they're giving Carter more minutes than more to me. I don't know. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think, but I think more should be definitely be getting minutes i think he could be a really crucial piece in the playoffs i really do he's a bit of a playmaker he's not a bad defender he's decent uh he's got a decent size on him pause (laughs) he's a good shooter i mean he's like a career 40 percent three-point shooter and he can finish around the rim he's got a good floater like i don't know why they're not utilizing him at all that's so weird to me he was a starter on a playoff team like two fucking years ago. Now he's sitting, you know, in the fucking 15th spot on the bench. Like, I don't know. It just doesn't make sense. But, hey, man, I'm not a coach for a couple of reasons. So I'm going to give money the benefit of the doubt. Usually doesn't miss. So I don't know, guys. I think that's it. This was a solid win. Again, I know it wasn't a 50-point win, but... Like I've said in previous videos, the more clutch situations, the more tough situations we can put this team through before the playoffs, I say the better every fucking day. I don't give a shit how many third quarter leads they blow. I'm not really worried because I know in the playoffs, the lineups are going to be different. And these the lineups that I think they're going to use are a lot less prone to um, blowing leads. Because he, you know, he likes to go to the deep bench all the time. He's not going to be doing that shit on the playoffs. He's not going to be doing that shit. Like, Sarge is not going to be as vital of a piece offensively, at least I don't think. 
I think Chris Paul will be more aggressive. I think Booker is going to be just about the same, even if he's a little bit worse. Like I said in like a video a long ass time ago, like my first Devin Booker video actually, there's no way he'll be worse than Harden, okay? No fucking way. And with Chris Paul and James Harden, they damn near beat one of the greatest fucking teams of all time. So I think this Suns team is a lot better than that Rockets team is. Or not a lot better, but I think like as a team, they play a lot better as a team offensively. Uh, yeah, I think eh, offensively, I don't know about defensively, they might be the same. Or, um, honestly, that Rockets team may have been even a little bit better. So, um, maybe, maybe, I don't know. So, uh, I don't know, guys, let me know what you guys think. Was this a good win? Are you mad that they didn't beat their ass? Are you worried about the fourth quarter turnovers? Because I am a little bit, I'm not going to lie. Again, I think it has more to do with the competition and them just not really giving a shit, kind of checking out a little bit. But, you know, obviously they didn't have too many turnovers because they won and they came back uh, from a little bit of a deficit in the fourth. Shout out to Devin Booker. I, you know what? I'm so sorry. I got to give Devin Booker more credit. This man had 36 points, six assists, and six boards in 36 minutes. They were down by three before he came in. He scores eight points in a row, uh, gives them a lead by five, had very clutch free throw shooting. Again, like people always want to give Chris Paul the credit because his team didn't make the playoffs. Now they're second in the West. I get that. He added some culture shit, but this is a prime example of a game that the Suns probably would have lost if Devin Booker didn't fucking take over. And he took over again. Because Chris Paul refuses, and I think that's why this pair works so well. Because Chris Paul, he could, he can score just as well as anybody on every team he's ever been on, damn near. But his mentality is always just pass first. But a lot of the times, you're passing to somebody that's just not going to get it done. Devin Booker doesn't really have that mentality. He's like, every time I'm on the court, I am the best player. And I'm going to be taking the tough shots. And if I miss, I miss. And if I make it, which I'm going to, then we're good. So who gives a fuck? That seems to be his energy. And I kind of wish Chris Paul would take a little bit of that energy. And uh, I think the Suns would drop a lot less leads. But, you know, I can't control the man. So, uh, yeah. But I think this video has been long enough. I've been rambling on and on. And uh, I'll see you guys in a couple days. Now, we got that back-to-back -back with the fucking, with the Jazz and the Clippers. Now, that shit I'm excited about. You know, playing against the Rockets and the Grizzlies and the Warriors. You know, those teams fucking suck. I don't give, I don't give a shit. I'm going to be real. OKC, like I said, there's a bunch of goddamn milkmen and people with part-time jobs we're playing against. I don't give a fuck about that. I can't use that for ring season. This team is nowhere near a playoff team. They're civilian as hell. But these next two games, these are going to be good ones. So I'll see you guys then. Obviously, I'm going to make a video about that shit because it's what I do. And, um, yeah, I'll talk to you guys soon. Peace.